So I have made it no secret that I am no fan of EA. For the past two years, I have gleefully taken them to task for their treatment of the career mode community. The unfinished dumpster fire that they tried to pass off as career mode in FIFA 19 and 20 were back-to-back -back low points for a game mode that might I remind you built EA's multi-billion dollar kingdom, continuing an alarming downward trend for a career mode that has lasted for the past seven years now. So it is gonna come as no surprise to you when I tell you that FIFA 21 career mode is good. That can't be right. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me let me rephrase that. FIFA 21 is the best version of career mode since Xbox 360, which is also an incredibly low bar to beat. Like, I've been playing FIFA 21 career mode for about a month now, and I still can't tell if this is actually, like, a fun, good game mode, or I'm in an abusive relationship. Like, when Uncle EA has been molesting the game mode that you've loved for the past seven years, and then stops, does that make it a good career mode? Well, let's make the case. I'm gonna lay out all the pros, all the cons, all my childhood trauma to help you answer the question, is career mode good in FIFA 21? Now, quick refresher on what EA has been up to for the past couple of FIFAs. Let me remind you that in FIFA 19, their biggest addition to career mode was nothing. Yes, jack shit and you'll like it, career mode fans. It was the first time ever that there were zero changes announced to career mode, which was an all-time low for career mode fans, but EA somehow outdid themselves in FIFA 20. Because, oh, FIFA 20. Big teams refusing to play any other good players, Champions League and Europa League not working after four seasons, getting fired without warning randomly all over the place, and those were just a few of the many many game-breaking bugs that EA were having people pay a full $60 at release to essentially beta test their game. Uh, keep going, keep going for now, keep I going. I can't, it's broken! It's broken! Fuck! Oh, it was impressive. EA somehow made career mode worse than doing nothing. And God forbid if you got a special edition. Fuck! It was simply unacceptable. Hashtag fix career mode was trending on Twitter worldwide at this time last year. And I think my man Cutsy summed it up best last year when he said that this is what happens when you don't fix career mode's broken issues before adding new features at EA. Now eventually they would patch out these issues in the months to come after release, but the damage was done. Many patrons who paid full price for FIFA just for career mode were soured, never to return. And honestly, there's no other way to put this, they were scammed. And then fast forward to just a month ago when FIFA's sister game, Madden 21, came out and their franchise mode was a fucking colonoscopy. Just shit everywhere. No major changes, minor bug fixes, at best cut and paste assets, some of which wasn't even updated from their Madden 20 branding. Hashtag fix Madden franchise was trending worldwide. Sound familiar? So all the stonks were trending to the inevitable. We collectively braced for EA to deliver yet another masterclass. It's sadness with the release of FIFA 21. Hashtag fix career mode 2020 incoming in three, two, one. But then something weird happened. Game's been out one month and nothing. Crickets. No hashtags, no outrage, the coming apocalypse. It never came. So why is that? Well, remember Cutsy's tweet? This is what happens when you don't fix career mode's broken issues before adding new features at EA. Well, at EA apparently listened because I can say confidently that the biggest pro of career mode in FIFA 21 is that everything actually works. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I know, it seems like the bare minimum, but it is impossible to play these two career modes a year apart and not notice the stark differences between them. FIFA 21 career mode is polished, finished, tested. It's like you're navigating Netflix. Everything just feels intuitive and just works. While FIFA 20 career mode was like trying to watch something on Hulu. You know what I mean. You ever try to rewatch a series on Hulu and they just constantly autoplay you into the end theme over and over and over again? Listen, Gundam Wing has a good ending theme, but if I have to listen to it 24 times in a row, I'm gonna kill myself. <sighs> Same energy. But you know what? They listen to a cutscene this year. They went in, they fixed all the shitty code from last year, and all the new features that they added in is actually working with the old systems. And I have no clue how the hell they were able to turn it around after seven consecutive years of incompetence. But they did it, and my only logical explanation is that it was an act of God. Honestly, someone needs to check if Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has returned to our mortal realm, not to give us a cure for corona, but to do the more noble thing, to fix career mode. And I, for one, thank you, Coder Jesus, for turning this shit-cursed franchise into drinkable wine. Which leads me to my next pro in FIFA 21 career mode, and that is... 
the new additions. Now EA's big selling point for Chrome Mode this year were development plans and this new FM style sim system. So let's touch on development plans first. Now for you guys who aren't in the know, development plans is essentially bringing what chemistry styles brought to Ultimate Team. Something fans have been asking for for years. By assigning different development plans, you can target which stats will grow on a player, allowing you to mold a player however you like. And unlike chem styles, these stat boots are permanent, allowing you to move on other stats when maxed. This, in many ways, makes it kind of superior to the Ultimate Team chem system. And you can even do what you can in Ultimate Team and train players to get 5-star weak foot or 5-star skill moves, or both! And if that wasn't enough, you can even use development plans to train a player to become any other position on the pitch besides keep. This really showcases what I think is the defining theme the designers were going for in FIFA 21, and that is FREEDOM! Freedom to grow a player how you see fit, in a position you see fit, and create a team how you see fit. You want to build a team where the starting 11 has 5 star skill moves? Do you, Kazooie? Always thought Alexander Arnold was too much of a defensive liability? Turn him into a center mid, Chenny. Honestly, the player growth system in FIFA 21 now reminds me of the best aspects of RPGs, like Fire Emblem's class mastery system or Pokemon with their EV training. And that's not all down to development plans. A lot of credit needs to be given to a revamp of dynamic potential because holy fuck is it fuck! in FIFA 21. Dynamic potential, for you guys who don't know, was a system added in last year that would change a player's potential based on if they played well or poorly. So score a lot of goals with Joe Schmo, who had 75 potential, and next season his potential would jump to about 8. In theory, this would allow you to create heroes from anywhere, instead of the time on a tradition of looking at videos on YouTube titled, THE BEST YOUNG HIGH POTENTIAL PLAYERS TO BUY IN CAREER MODE. I got a new one out for FIFA 21, and daddy needs to pay the bills during a pandemic. But unfortunately, for FIFA 20, the potential would go up, but often the growth of the player would never catch up. For example, I tested taking the worst potential youngster in FIFA 20, and saw how far dynamic potential would take him by the end of his career. And while we were able to get his potential from 54 to a staggering 97, we were only able to grow him from a 48 overall to a paltry 67 overall. So there was kind of no point. Potential like in real life, is only as good if it is fulfilled. And yes, the metaphor of EA adding a potential system into career mode that didn't fulfill its potential is better satire than I could ever hope to write. But in FIFA 21, that all changed because Coder Jesus came through. I did the exact same experiment I did in FIFA 20, link up to the video, but spoiler alert, holy hell! With a combo of dynamic potential and development plans, we were able to take a 52 potential 41 overall center back and by the end of his career, raise him to a 97 overall CDM with 5 star weak foot and 5 star skill moves, because why the hell not? Now, he did fall two points short of his end potential of 99, but I think we will take a prime moment's hull it any way we can. And that brings me to the biggest change in crew that not enough people are talking about, and that is High potential is dead as of FIFA 21. If I can turn the worst youngster in career mode into a god, then you can play with whoever you want. If they're young enough, if they're given the playtime, and if they play even halfway decent, they're gonna grow into a great player. And if you are a fan of lower tier teams, this is the year to do a road to glory career mode. If you never tried taking a team from the fourth division of English football all the way to the Prem, do yourself a favor, try it at least once this year. It just hits different when you're going up through the division. And if you wanna see what an RTG looks like in action, do yourself a favor and check out Cutsy's Harrogate series. Pound for pound, best career mode series running on YouTube right now. Put it up against anybody on the platform. And he is a griddled veteran, man. He has been taking fourth division scrubs to the Prem for years now. And this year is no different. Links to that in the eye thingies. And it would be so heartbreaking in the past when you have to sell these homies that you rose to the ranks with because they, they just weren't gonna cut the mustard in the top flight. But now with changes to dynamic potential, you can keep those hometown heroes all the way through the prem. Or use dynamic potential to grow these cheap beasts into high potential monsters and sell them off for massive profits. There are no wrong answers. There's a lot of creative ways for you to use these new features and existing features in crew mode to your advantage. And if anything, dynamic potential might be a little bit too strong. Like especially with young players who already have high potential, you could easily get a full team of like 97s, 99s, in a, in a matter of a couple seasons. In another growth test, I took Mason Greenwood, who started out at a 77 overall, and he had 89 potential, and he hit 97 by the end of season four. So yeah, I get it. That this could this could definitely be a con because for a lot of people, this is gonna break immersion. To have a god squad only after like a few seasons is uh, is a bit of overkill. But personally, I will always side on too much growth versus too little. And if you don't like that, Joe Rando is becoming the next Lionel Messi, then there is a simple solution to that, and that is 
don't play him. I remind you, dynamic potential only affects your starting 11, while your bench and your reserves will grow as normal. And if you don't want your entire starting 11 to be OP, then I suggest that you rotate your squad. And in all honesty, I don't know that if that many people in 2020 are going to be playing career mode more than a couple seasons anyway, especially if they're already using bigger teams. And also a reminder that dynamic potential only affects your team and your team alone. So have no fear, Burnley is going to show up three seasons in with a full icon squad. Now, is it a perfect system? Obviously not. In the future, I would like to see a personal tweak, and this is just my suggestion, another free suggestion EA. Well, a lot of this could be fixed if you made it easy for the potential to get up to the 80s, but after 80, it should scale progressively harder to reach 90 potential and beyond. I think that would fix the issue with the overgrowth as well as make it so that like 90 plus youngsters actually still feel special because that is kind of a little bit of knock of this like new dynamic potential system is like, you know, Mbappe doesn't really feel like that great anymore. Like there's no point in buying Mbappe unless you're a fan because honestly, you could just buy Mason Greenwood for a fraction of the price and he'll get to like 99 pace and 99 acceleration anyway. And even further, Mason Greenwood isn't even that important. You could buy someone even cheaper than him and you can get the five star weak foot in a season. But considering in the past seven years of crew mode where we had very little control over stat growth and even worse there were fifas where the growth was completely stunted you would have great high potential youngsters that just would refuse to grow in either sprint speed or stamina ruining them so big picture i am not going to complain about any of this in fifa 21. For me, watching players grow and team building are my two favorite things about career mode. I eat that shit up and i think that's what most career mode fans enjoy the most. We certainly don't like the gameplay Ugh. but we play crew mode because we want to run a club. We want to buy the players we believe in, build a team in our image, and then take that team and conquer the highest heights that world football has to offer. That is what the core of career mode has always been about. And FIFA 21 Career Mode not only delivers on those promises, but gives you multiple routes to go about it. And that freedom continues in the other major addition to Career Mode this year, in what I like to call the Football Manager Dot Simmer. Previous FIFAs, you only had two options when it came to matches. You either quick sim, or you play the full match. That's it. But now, with the new FM Dot Simmer, you get a third option, which is actually kind of a hybrid of both, allowing you to see the game played out with these dots in real time. It's not as deep with the tactics that Football Manager offers, but it actually offers something FM doesn't have, and that is the ability to hop in and out of matches as you please. Need to rescue a game you can't afford to lose? Jump in and score a goal. Take a free kick. Two foot Neymar. And then you can hop back out to the dot simming again. Or just jump to the end completely. Once again, E are giving you the choice to play however you want. So for the diehards who want to play every single match and micromanage every little thing like the psychopath you are, you can do it. And for the dad with a newborn who just wants to have the sim running while they're changing a diaper, they got you covered too. It gives people flexibility and I cannot knock EA for that. But I do have I do have one minor gripe. My only issue is that we need like a 2x speed button on the dot simming because as of now it's it's a little bit long. Nitpicky I know but you know just just a 2x speed button would, would make this pretty much perfect. But enough of me sucking the dick of EA. I know it's been weird for both of us. But let's return to normalcy. Let's talk about cons. Competitor mode sucks. I'm sorry. I know competitor mode was introduced with the best of intentions, but so was communism. And honestly, neither one of them were thoroughly thought out. Now, fans have complained for years about how drab and dead the AI plays in career mode. EA tried to address these issues by creating a new eye built to mimic the playstyles of pro FIFA players. In theory, this would make the AI simultaneously feel less robotic and offer more challenging gameplay. But there was a key issue they overlooked when building an AI off of pro FIFA players, and that is most people playing career mode are not pro FIFA players. So how did you expect us to beat a pro FIFA player? Who thought playing hashtag Harry every single match would be fun? Think about it. You don't even have to play a pro every match in weekend league. And hey, I acknowledge that some people will enjoy the challenge, but I've been talking to a lot of FIFA players who are better than me. And I've yet to find a single one who enjoys playing career mode with competitor mode on. And to play this style of AI match after match with every team scaling you to death is not only annoying, but it just breaks immersion. It doesn't feel like a football system simulation when Luton Town is playing like Tex. And yes, luckily, you can turn it on and off. But as much as I bemoan this new feature, I can also acknowledge and see its potential. Like if instead of making the whole entire team play this way, what if, what if they only apply this type of AI to certain top echelon players? Like obviously it breaks immersion if Stoke shows up doing a La Croqueta, Waka Waka, Donkey Punch. But if it's Neymar scaling through your defense or KDB dancing you up, feels realistic and it would also solve the issue that it's played career mode for forever 
and that is making superstar players actually feel like superstars. When you face Ronaldo, I want you terrified. I want you clinching your butthole and praying to get to that full 90. I want Ronaldo to feel like the unguardable game breaker that he is in real life, not just another pacey strong robot on the wing. And for people who want that challenge, you can kind of do it in this year's FIFA. I say key competitor mode off for the majority of your matches, but then turn it on for both cup finals and big derbies. Come on, do it. It'll grow some hair in your chest. Or the gamer equivalent, make you lean forward in your chair. But even with competitor mode turned off, legendary difficulty this year seems a little bit spicier than last. My man Cutsy, who plays about as much career mode as anyone I know, says that he has been absolutely loving career mode with competitor mode off. He has been using a couple of sliders here and there, but he says that this is probably the most enjoyable gameplay in years. Until they've ruined it in the latest patch, fuck you AA. Which leads me to another con, and that is EA use the same gameplay in crew mode as they do in foot and squad battles. And this has been an issue for years because EA will always change the gameplay to serve their ultimate team customers needs over what is best for career mode. And how AI plays when it's human versus human is not ideal when it's human versus AI. But I mean, you have a whole other game mode that plays completely different from anything else in FIFA and no one is playing that. So maybe, you know, do the same for the game mode that millions of people are actually playing? Just a friendly suggestion. That makes a lot of sense. And that's kind of it for the cons. I guess you can throw in like, yeah, the overgrowth with dynamic potential and gameplay without compare mode is still, it's okay, but it's not knocking you out of the park. But overall, nothing nearly as game breaking or broken as last year's launch. So I've done it. I've gone through all the pros. I've gone through all the cons. And now it is time to answer the question, is FIFA 21 career mode actually good? And after writing everything out, everything points to a definitive yes. <laughs> But, but, something in my gut is saying that, that it's, it's, it's more complicated than a binary good or bad. I think the best answer I can give you is an analogy. FIFA 21 career mode is like going to Burger King. You're never disappointed eating Burger King, but you're not going to be that happy either. But, at least you get to have it your way. And that should be FIFA 21's career mode slogan. Have it your way. Want a super juiced team of 97 rated 25 year olds? Or have a well rounded team by rotating your squad? Have it your way. Do you want to take a team of all five star skillers and have a death match against Huge Gorilla? Have it your way. Now, is FIFA 21 worth full price if you only play career mode? And honestly, it's close. There's so much to like about career mode this year. The revamped team building system gives you a literal sandbox to play in. Nothing is broken or glitchy. Systems old and new seem to be working as intended. And let me remind you, they did all of this during Corona. They had every excuse and reason to just blame COVID for a shortened development cycle and give us another shit career mode, but they didn't. And they should be applauded for that. Honestly, to the career mode devs, please keep working from home because this is more positive change than we have seen in the past seven years combined. Stay home when they are. But the gameplay isn't still quite there for me personally and competitor mode is, is kind of an unplayable mess. And gameplay is a major portion of career mode. So it, it's really tough for me to recommend paying full price upon release now. If you are patient, we are about a month away from Black Friday. And every time Black Friday comes around, the price of FIFA drops from a full 60 to $35. And at $35, I, the greatest EA hater on career mode YouTube, would actually fucking recommend you buy FIFA 21 for career mode. <laughs> I know, I'm as shocked as you. But 2020 would be the year where literally everything else sucked except career mode. We're living in the upside down, people. And once again, I would highly, highly recommend that you purchase the PC version over any of the console versions. And the main reason for that is on the PC version, you can get mods and mods are amazing. With all the mods, you'll be able to get all the licensing patched back in. You can get all the kits that have been removed. You get more realistic faces. Hell, you can even inject icons. And in the future, they'll be able to tweet the gameplay and much, much more. There are a lot of talented modders out there. I highly recommend that you check them out, go on Twitter. And in conclusion, I call things how I see it. If you make shit and try to sell it to people, I'm gonna call it a scam. But if I see that you put effort and attention to detail, I'll give you credit. And EA deserve all the credit in the world for all of the improvements that they put into career mode in FIFA 21. And for people who have been away from career mode for a while, this would be a solid entry to dip your toes back in the water. Now, there is still a big, big elephant in the room. And as promising as FIFA 21 is, let I remind you that we are also moving to next gen this year. And historically, the jump to next gen always means stripping down career mode back to its bare bones features. Basically starting from the goddamn ground up. EA, 
have always done this. Let me remind you, FIFA 14 on Xbox 360 was amazing, while FIFA 14 on PS4 was a war crime. And yes, FIFA 21, I can I can easily say, is the best career mode on this current console's life cycle, but we are just gonna have to wait and see if next-gen FIFA career mode is gonna continue the upward trajectory, or are we starting from the ground up again? I hope not, but I do plan on getting a next-gen console as well as FIFA on next-gen, and I'm gonna be reviewing it and putting it out to you guys. So go ahead, hit the notifications, and be on the lookout for that, and for you guys who already have notifications on, go ahead, click it off and click it back on because YouTube has been quite wonky with sending out my videos lately. Also, if anyone has a PS5 hookup, holla at your boy. And that is going to be it for this video. If you want more video essays from me, go ahead and click over here. Dings and Poos, if you want to see my latest FIFA experiment, go ahead and click over here. Dings and Poos. And I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons keeping the lights on, keeping this fat Asian alive during the pandemic. Mwah. I cannot say thank you to you guys enough. I appreciate you all. For everyone who watches, thank you so much. Have a great day. Stay safe. And until next time, boys, stay thick.